What is sustainability? The word sustainability has many meanings to maintain, support, endure and withstand. It most commonly means maintaining the world we live in. The main idea is that we must act responsibly so that the resources on the planet will be able to support many generations to come. There are a limited amount of resources on earth which are exploited every day to produce houses, cars, computers and pretty much everything. Sustainability means to maintain these resources forever. Our actions have a deep impact on the environment and we need to protect it for the future generations. If you want to figure out if something is sustainable, you should ask yourself the question, can I do this forever? Let's take a look at the product plastic to understand this better. Plastic was introduced in the early 1990s and is a mass-produced item today. We use plastic for everything from food containers to lamps, toys, bottles, bags and much more. Plastic takes millions of years to decompose. So what happens to all this plastic after we finish using it? We end up with a large amount of plastic that is just taking up space on earth. So now if we ask, can I do this forever? The answer is no. Plastic is just one example of unsustainable consumption. Here are a few ways your actions can contribute to sustainability. Lifestyle Your lifestyle is your choice and you can change it. Always carry your own cloth bag when you go to the grocery store. Avoid plastic bags. Fixing If your watch, toy or camera is broken, don't just buy a new one. Try fixing it. Recycle be conscious about the things around you. Maybe you can reuse some of them. Needs versus wants. Before you buy something, ask yourself the question, do I need it or do I want it? Remember, sustainability begins with you. So act locally and think globally. What is Carbon Footprint? Most energy produced in the world is done by burning fossil fuels such as petroleum and gas. You need petrol to drive your car and gas to light your stove. Your carbon footprint is the total amount of CO2 and methane gas you release into the environment by consuming energy. Save Energy Units Using paper, for example, adds to your carbon footprint because it takes 15 units of energy to make paper from a plant. A plant takes 5 units of energy to grow into a tree. It takes 4 units of energy to cut the tree and transport it to the paper mill. It takes 6 units of energy to create paper in the mill. So next time, don't throw your books into the dustbin. Instead, you can give them for recycling and save our plants and energy. Save electricity. If you forget to switch off a light or a computer when you leave home, you are adding to your carbon footprint. So next time, don't forget to turn off the computer and switch off the lights before going out. If you're going to a friend's house close by, convince your parents to walk with you instead of taking a car or taxi. Air Pollution Pollution is the introduction of foreign products into the atmosphere that have detrimental effects on living organisms and cause damage to the environment. Vehicles release chemicals in the form of exhaust fumes. These chemicals are very harmful to the environment. These gases also cause acid rain which is also very damaging to the earth. 
Many industries release a lot of fumes which are harmful for the environment. Refrigerators and air conditioners release chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons which over time lead to the formation of holes in the ozone layer. These holes let the ultraviolet rays of the sun reach the earth and thus cause various health problems for humans. Fumes released by weapons are also toxic. Volcanoes upon erupting eject tons of smoke and harmful gases. These toxic substances linger in the atmosphere for a long time, causing breathing problems for organisms. Naturally occurring radioactive materials inside the earth sometimes decay, releasing a gas called radon. It is considered to be a health hazard as it causes lung cancer if humans are exposed to it for a long time. Biodiversity Biodiversity is the variety of animals and plants found on this planet, including the geographic locations they are found in. The diversity of species is not evenly distributed throughout the planet because life depends on many factors, including geography. For example, tropical regions support more life than polar regions. Plants, animals and climate work together to maintain the balance of nature. They act as nuts, bolts and oil of a perfectly tuned machine. The Pyramid of Nature's Balance Biodiversity is important for sustaining life on Earth because it prevents any one species from throwing the balance of nature out of order. Snakes are not a welcome presence in our lives. So we fear them and try to get rid of them. One of the many things that snakes feed on is rats. If we were to kill all the snakes, we would end up having a terrible rat problem. Biodiversity means maintaining the balance of nature so that no one thing can become too powerful and therefore bad for everyone else. What is the ozone layer? Have you ever wondered why cricketers paint their faces white? Or why your mother insists that you put on sunscreen lotion before stepping out every summer? The answer is UV rays. Ultraviolet or UV rays are harmful sun rays that can increase the risk of skin cancer, cataract and harm the immune system. They can also damage terrestrial plant life, single cell organisms and aquatic ecosystems. Life on Earth is protected from the UV rays by a layer in the stratosphere called the ozone layer. Ozone is a gas made up of three oxygen atoms. This layer is just about 3 to 5 millimeters thick. This thinly spread out gas has been protecting life on the Earth's surface from UV rays for billions of years. Our ozone shield is now being deteriorated due to certain man-made chemicals, primarily chlorofluorocarbons CFCs, and nitrogen oxides. CFCs are a group of chemically similar gases used in refrigeration systems, air conditioners, aerosols, solvents and in the production of some types of packaging. Nitrogen oxides are a byproduct of fuel burning, for example, from aircraft exhausts. What is the ozone hole? The ozone hole is not literally a hole, 
but an area wherein the total ozone amount is less than 220 Dobson units. The ozone hole has steadily grown in size up to 27 million square kilometers. Can we stop the depletion of ozone layer? Yes, we can! All we have to do is to reduce the production of those chemicals that cause the destruction of ozone like CFCs and nitrogen oxides. So, encourage your parents, relatives and friends to make sure their refrigerators and air conditioners do not have CFCs. Activity Find out the names of scientists who discovered a recurring springtime Antarctic ozone hole. Find out about ozone gas that can be dangerous to our health. Segregation of garbage Garbage is a huge global problem. We produce so many products and throw out so much every day that garbage and waste disposal is turning into a major ecological nightmare. Garbage is classified into four categories. Waste. This should be disposed of separately. Toxic waste. This includes medicines, batteries, dried paint, old bulbs and dried shoe polish which need special care when we dispose them off. Wet or organic waste. This consists of leftover foodstuff and vegetable peels. This should be put in a compost pit and the resulting compost should be used as manure in the garden. Dry waste. Waste consisting of cans, aluminium foils, plastics, metal, glass and paper should be recycled. Encourage your parents to buy two separate bins for dry and wet garbage. You can color code them green for dry and blue for wet. Therefore, your garbage collector will be able to segregate the garbage easily.